Hello everyone, welcome to a lesson on electromagnetism. Um, this lesson is going to be less of a serious lesson and more of a fun demonstration of the cool things that, that can happen with electromagnetism. All right, what we're gonna look at specifically is high frequency alternating current. All right, we've already learned from Faraday and from Tesla about um, magnetism making electricity and then of course, um, alternating current, which Tesla really developed, all right? So what we're gonna look at in honor of Tesla is something called a Tesla coil, all right? And now it is super, super high frequency, high voltage um, electricity, all right? Our standard sockets in our household only run at 60 hertz, all right? This is much, much, much higher, all right? Now, electricity is, is very strange, there's a lot to it. We've hit the basics, but we're no experts, all right? So very, 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 very high frequency uh, electricity can behave weird and it can interact with things differently than what you would uh, imagine, all right? So today's, uh, or this lesson, is going to um, explore some of those things. And we're not gonna go into depth or detail, we're just gonna kinda see the, the fun things um, and the fun phenomena that happen with that, all right? So let's take a look. All right, so um, let's check out this uh, Tesla coil. It doesn't look like much. And when I turn it on, it just makes a heck of a racket, all right? And you really can't see what's happening here, right? So let me dim the lights, and then we'll see um, if we can get anything out of this Tesla coil, all right? Okay, now that I had the lights dim, let's uh, fire this thing back up and see what we get. All right, so you can definitely see the phenomenon at the top here. If I bring this thing closer, all right, um, to the tip of the Tesla coil, it's um, sparking off, it, it sends off uh, electric sparks in the air, super high frequency, and it's pretty wild, all right? Uh, makes a heck of a racket, but let's kind of play around with it, because this, uh, this is only okay, all right? Let's modify this thing and see what happens. Okay, now with the Tesla cool, I've attached a uh, standard regular light bulb, all right? It's not an LED light bulb or flashing light bulb, just a regular light bulb, and let's fire this thing back up. Very, very different than uh, what a normal light bulb looks like, all right? You can see that now the Tesla coil is going through the conducting parts of the light bulb and still arcing from there, all right? And you may have seen it before in those, um, those weird-looking orbs, too. This is somewhat like that, all right? And we can even touch this thing with our fingers, and it tracks my hands. And I don't actually feel anything, all right? So it's pretty cool. Again, that's as if we can test coil with it with a light bulb on top of it. All right. If you get any close, you can kind of see what it looks like. Pretty wild. All right. And as I move this closer, it goes right to my finger. Pretty awesome. All right. So let's look at a little bit. Let's look a little more um, of a different Tesla coil that I have. Okay. Okay. So now I have this Tesla coil. All right, a little bit different, um, but, but the same principle. It's not on yet, so let me turn it on. All right, maybe hear a familiar buzzing, and you can't really see much, all right? But if I bring it near something, the here is starting to jump a little bit, all right? You really can't see much, but if I go over to this, you may be able to see it jump through, all right? So let's um, look at that with the lights off and see what happens. Okay, so now the lights are a little bit dimmer, all right? And turn this thing on and when I go over to the metal faucet now we can see it jump a little bit all right so it's still far away the camera so let me bring the camera a little closer and you can get a good idea what this looks like okay now we're a little closer um, let's see what it looks like with a close-up view all right you may be able to see the um, a pink you can kind of just see now the pink tip of this or sorry the purple tip and when I bring it close to the metal faucet, we get essentially like a lightning wand, which is pretty wild, all right? Now, this thing is, is pretty power powerful. It'll go straight through paper, all right? Kind of hard to see. Goes straight through the paper, and if I get it there in the right spot, just enough, all right, then it's a little hard to see. But what I can do with the paper is set it on fire, all right? 
out. So I hope that doesn't set off the fire alarm, but we got it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this thing is very different than the, uh, than the Van de Graaff generator we used, where this is high frequency, and that was a one direct current uh, shock, all right? So let's look at what else this thing can do. Okay, so let's check out this next thing. If I turn our um, Tesla cool back up to power, all right, we still prove that it's working. All right, very light and warm. But I am um, a pretty powerful person. What I can do is just grab onto it with my hand, and now it's like magic. With my other hand, I can light up this fluorescent tube. All right, so. It's, it's pretty cool. This, the electric field is going around the outside of my skin. I'm not burning up or getting electrocuted. I can still turn this thing on. All right? Pretty wild. And I'll show you what it looks like with the lights on as well. Okay, so now we have the lights on. You can see a little better. This thing will turn on. All right? Still gets my arc through there. And grab it with one hand. And now the fluorescent tube is lit up. All right? Which is pretty cool. Okay, might even be able to shock this thing a little bit, but I don't think you can see that with the uh, lights on. All right. Okay, now that you've seen uh, me actually hold the Tesla coil and light up a, a fluorescent tube, um, you, if you remember, if you thought back to it, well, it wasn't making the sound that it makes when it arcs. To the, uh, to the metal faucet, all right? So that kind of gives you an idea that it wasn't uh, shocking me. But what if it did arc, or can it arc to me? Well, let's find out. If I turn this thing back on, all right? Maybe hard to see, so we might have to turn off the lights again. But if I just stick my arm out, all right? Bring this thing near it, let's see what happens, all right? All right, it, it does obviously arc. Now let's turn off the lights so we can um, get a better uh, look at it. Okay, so obviously the lights are dimmer. Let's fire this thing back up. All right, you can see it's on, the, the little purple glow at the top. That, that kind of means it's dissipating into the air, if you will. All right, and let's see what it looks like if it arcs to my, um, to my body, to my skin. Let's see what happens. And... Yeah, that, that starts to hurt, all right? So it's not just me making this stuff up, that's, that's real. Now I'll give you one more um, picture up, up close on what it's doing to my um, body. I'm gonna show you this uh, relatively quickly because it's, it's actually starting to hurt, um, but you're gonna see what the reaction to my, um, the reaction to my arm when this when it gets the right spots, all right. So when it hits, all right, if I get the right spots, it, it flexes um, involuntarily my fingers, all right. I'm not doing that because it hurts. I have no choice. My hands limp now, all right. And I get that one spot, well, that you can see what controls my fingers, all right. Now, why does it do that? Well, your muscles are, con uh, all, remember all your muscles can do is contract, all right? And your fingers only go one way. They don't go the other way, they only go this way. So your forearm muscles control your wrists and then your fingers. And what causes your muscles to contract? Well, your nerves send a, literally an electrical signal. And that electric pulse um, causes those muscles to twitch. And this is sending that electrical pulse and it's overriding the nerves. It's overriding my brain and giving it, uh, my muscles that electric um, stimulus, if will, and that's what controls it. It's essentially overriding my brain, all right? And uh, while this doesn't go through my whole body, it stays local because it's, it's super high frequency. It doesn't go very deep. Um, there's the, the, the skin effect. It's kind of weird. Um, it does start to hurt, all right? It's not like the... Um, the Van de Graaff generator, the electric shock, or it feel like it goes through your whole entire body. This is very localized, all right? And if you can see on my right arm here, let me come around to the other side, all right? This is um, the effects of it. I don't know how well you can see that, all right? But 
there is um, localized like burns on my skin, all right? And if I bring this over here, you might be able to see it a little better in a sec. All right, with if I get in the better light, if you can see on my forearm, I did a cross with this thing before, right before I started the lesson. And about 20 minutes later, this is the result, all right? And you can start to see on my other one that you just uh, saw it starts to give a little bit of a rash there. So that's the effects of um, shocking yourself and playing around with high uh, frequency electricity. Um, do not, I do not recommend doing this. Don't go and build your own Tesla coil. I'm a quote unquote professional. Um, I've been doing this a while so I know what to expect. And it does hurt. These marks will stay for probably two weeks. But since we're in quarantine and pretty much locked down, um, ain't nobody gonna see it, so big deal, all right? So I hope you enjoyed um, that, that electricity demo. It's kind of fun, I wish we could do it um, in person, in real life, um, but this is the best we can do right now. So um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll uh, see you when I see you.